Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Teen Corner. My name is Miss Rachel and I am the Teen Services Librarian here at Morley Library. Now today's book talk theme is in recognition of Native American Heritage Month which takes place in November as a time to celebrate the culture, accomplishments, and contributions of people who were the first inhabitants of the United States of America. I myself have Cherokee ancestry and in honor of Native American Heritage Month. The two books I'll be sharing today are, we have Apple, Skin to the Core by Eric Gansworth. And we have The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. All right, let's get started. The first book, Apple Skin to the Core, is a memoir, novel, and verse about the author's life experience growing up in an Onondaga family living on a Tuscarora reservation, but it also gives a lot of insight and context to the indigenous experience in the U.S. and dealing with the racism that comes along with it, unfortunately. The title of this book is actually a reference to a slur common in Native communities, Apple, for someone red on the outside and white on the inside. Now, while this book is marketed as a young adult memoir, the references to the 1970s and the music group The Beatles give it crossover appeal for adults and a first-hand historical perspective about indigenous people. The book also includes several photos and is worth checking out as the audiobook version does make reference to these photos. All right. Now on to our next book. The second book, Firekeeper's Daughter, is a YA thriller from new author Angeline Bully. 18-year-old Donis Fontaine is a mixed-race student, and her maternal lineage goes back to the French settlers in North America, while her father was the Ojibwe tribe's firekeeper, who tends a tribe's sacred fire. Uh, Donna's mixed heritage has always made her feel like an outsider, both in her hometown and on her reservation. She dreams of going to university and studying medicine. However, her uncle David has died of a drug overdose and her grandmother has had a stroke. Donna's fragile mother cannot cope with this on her own. So Donna's has no option but to postpone her plans to study. The only bright spot in her life is meeting Jamie. Jamie is a very charming and very handsome new recruit on her brother Levi's hockey team. Yet even as Donis falls for Jamie, certain details don't add up and she senses that he is hiding something. Everything comes to light when Donis witnesses a shocking murder, pushing her into the middle of a criminal investigation. Reluctantly, Donis agrees to go undercover but secretly pursues her own investigation, tracking down the criminals with her knowledge of chemistry and traditional medicine. But the deceptions and the deaths keep piling up and soon the threat strikes too close to home. Now, Donis must learn what it means to be a strong Ojibwe woman and how far she'll go to protect her community, even if it tears apart the only world that she's ever known. Now, this book is rich in indigenous culture. It explores themes of family, friendship, deception, grief, second chances, and love through our protagonist, Donis, who's headstrong and completely dedicated to her community. The author takes the reader on a journey about Native American culture, including traditions, language, history, the way they use the plants to turn them into natural medicines, their deep knowledge about chemistry and the survival skills and introduces them to so many new words, terms, and phrases. There's something so beautiful about discovering a new culture through books. And on that note, if you're interested in either of these books or learning more about indigenous cultures, please feel free to come on up to the Morley Library and we would be happy to help you. And on that note, Thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy reading.